This video covers D3 arrays. The structure of this video is as follows. In D3, data equals arrays. JavaScript arrays, JavaScript array mutator methods, JavaScript array accessor methods, basic D3 array utilities, and the summary. All right, let's get started. In D3, data equals arrays. When using D3 and doing data visualization in general, you will tend to do a lot of array manipulation. D3's canonical representation of data is an array. D3 uses arrays and associative arrays. We will focus on arrays in this video. Later, we will look at associative arrays. JavaScript arrays. Because D3 sits on top of JavaScript, we can use all of the power available in JavaScript within our D3 work. An array is an enumerated list of variables. It allows us to replace the left side with the right side, which can also be written as the equation on the bottom. Since an array is an enumerated list, it means that it retains its order. Additionally, arrays can consist of any kind of variable you want. In this case, the array consists of a string, a number, and a function. We can even have an array of arrays. This gives us multi-dimensional arrays, which is great for matrix math if and when we run into it. JavaScript array mutator methods. Next, let's take a look at a few basic JavaScript array mutator methods. A mutator method means that it modifies the array. Let's take a look at an array in the JavaScript console. We are going to use the initial HTML file we had loaded up before. This is because it already has D3 in it. When we zoom into the JavaScript console, first we're going to look at array.reverse. This will reverse the order of elements in the array. First, we define the easy array, which we'll use throughout this presentation. With our array, we can chain the reverse method to it. And when we do this, you'll see that it has reversed the array. When we load the variable again, you see that it's mutated the array, so now the variable is actually reversed. Next, we look at the array.shift. This removes the first element from our array. We define the easy array again because it's been mutated previously. We check to make sure that it's what we expect. And then we chain the shift method to the array. We see that it pops the number three. And when we reload the array, we see that it's missing the first element. Next, we look at array.sort. This sorts the elements of the array. We retype our easy array variable. We check to make sure that it is what we expect. And then we do a method chaining with the sort. And we see that our array is now sorted. We reload the array and we see that it's sorted. Clear the screen. Next, we look at array.splice. This adds or removes elements from the array. Splice 1, 2 will start at the index number of 1 and remove two elements, in this case, the 5 and the 8. So when we reload the easy array, you can see that it's missing the 5 and the 8. Splice also lets you add elements. Here we are going to start at index one. We're not going to remove any elements, but we are going to add the banana string element to it. So as you can see, we didn't remove any elements. And when we reload our array, you can see that in the index one, we have our string of banana. Next, we show that we can also do both operations at the same time. We'll start at index three, remove two elements, and add the string Sunday. 
So it removed elements eight and five. If we reload our array, you can see that Sunday has replaced the eight and the five. We clear the screen. Next, we look at array unshift. This adds one or more elements to the front of the array. We define our array again. Check to make sure it's what we expect. And we're going to unshift with three elements, 10, 11, 12. It returns 13. We check our array, we check the array and see that 10, 11, 12 were added at the beginning. And when we check the length of the array, we see that it's 13. So this is what the unshift operation returns. And those are the basic JavaScript array mutator methods. The keyword to pay attention to is mutator. These methods change the array in place so there is potential to alter, lose, or change the data if you aren't careful. JavaScript array accessor methods. Next, let's take a look at a few basic JavaScript array accessor methods. An accessor method returns a part or representation of the array. Let's take a look at two arrays in the JavaScript console. We continue to use the Chrome developer tools we opened earlier. First, we'll define our two arrays, the same easy array we were using in the previous section, as well as a new array called tiny array that contains two elements. So first, we're going to look at array.concat. This joins the array with other arrays or values. So we can concatenate the easy array with the tiny array, and it adds the array at the very end of our initial array. When we reload each of the arrays, we see that they are still the same. Next, we look at array.join. This joins all the array elements into a single string. We look at the array again, and we see that it has not changed. Next, we look at array.slice. This extracts a section of the array based on the indices, but does not include the last element. So in this case, we start at index 1 and go to index 4. So that returns the 5, 8, 13, but does not change the array variable. We can also slice starting from one index and don't specify an end, and that just returns everything to the right of that index. As you can see, our array has not changed. Next, we look at array.index of. This finds the first occurrence of a value within an array. Here, we look for the number 5. Returns the index of 1. Next, we look at the last index of. This finds the last occurrence of a value within an array. Our easy array has three number fives, so when it looks at the last index of five, it will return the last five element. Remember, arrays are based on zero indexing, so the last index of returns a nine, even though the length is 10 elements. And those are the basic JavaScript array accessor methods. Basic D3 array utilities. Lastly, let's take a look at a few basic D3 array utilities. These utilities come in very handy later when we are working with scales and axes. Let's look at what D3 provides for us to manipulate arrays in the JavaScript console. We will redefine our easy array. And then we check to make sure the variable is what we expect. This time we're going to look at d3.min. It returns the minimum value using natural order. In this case, it's negative 2. Note that it does not mutate the array. 
We check to make sure the easy array is still the same. This time we look at d3.max. This returns the maximum value using natural order. In our case, it returns the number 13. Next, we look at d3.extent. This returns an array containing the minimum and maximum values using natural order. So you can see the minimum is negative two and the maximum is 13. Because it's an array, we can look at the first and second element or the zero index and the one index to get the minimum and maximum. Next, we look at d3.sum. This returns the sum of the array. Next, we look at d3.mean. This returns the mean of the array, or the average. We can check this by doing d3sum of the array and dividing it by the array length. Next, we look at d3.median. This returns the median of the array. And those are the most basic d3 array utilities. The summary. In this video, you have learned that in d3, data equals arrays, JavaScript arrays, JavaScript array mutator methods, JavaScript array accessor methods, basic D3 array utilities, and the summary.